We will call the Juneteenth. 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 It is something important to me. Uh, we'll call the June 10th meeting of the Caroline County Board of Supervisors to order. Uh, let the record state that all board members are here, representing Port Royals, Mr. Calvin Taylor, representing the Western Caroline District, Mr. Jeff Black, representing Reedy Church, Mr. Reggie Underwood, representing Madison, Mr. Wayne Akers, representing Bowling Green, Mr. Jeff Seeley, and I'm Floyd Thomas, representing the Mattapanai District. At this point in time, I have asked, uh, or I will ask Mr. Black if he will deliver the invocation for us, Mr. Black. All rise, please. <laughs> Heavenly God, as we come before you tonight, we ask you to bless us with the knowledge to make the decisions that are best for Caroline County. We ask you to look over those in harm's way serving our country, and we ask you to help all those in need. For this, in your name we pray. Amen. 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 You please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Mr. Cully, do we have any amendments to the agenda today? Um, no, sir, no amendments to the agenda. No amendments? Mr. Mr. Chairman, could I... Uh, uh, off an amendment? You may. Thank you. I would like for us to add to new business the discussion of Burma Road and my purpose for doing that is there seems to be some concern as far as a, a turnaround, a no outlet sign and some other issues and on the last meeting we talked or I talked to the um, VDOT uh, person and I guess it's going to get back with us but there are some concerns uh, and I would like to uh, an opportunity to discuss that with the board excuse me Mr. Taylor that's fine we'll do that in the, in the form of a motion if that's your motion to amend the agenda well, I'll ask for second is there a second second uh, motion made by Mr. Taylor seconded by Mr. Akers discussion all those in favor say aye aye, aye. all opposed nay Motion carries unanimously. We will call that agenda item 12A, uh, Burma Road discussion. All righty. Uh, no other amendments. We will move to opening board comments. Mr. Taylor? I have none at this time. Mr. Black? Uh, yes, I just have one. Um, I'd like to just send uh, congratulations to all of the uh, graduates of uh, Caroline High School. Um, their graduation was this past Friday night um, up in Fredericksburg. Um, it really is uh, a great ceremony uh, that they put together. There was over 300 graduates from Caroline. Uh, and sometimes I think that our schools maybe get a, a bad rap, but uh, the speeches that were given by um, the uh, young ladies and gentlemen that graduated were uh, very, very impressive, and it's something that Caroline should be extremely proud of. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Black. Um, Mr. Underwood? No, sir, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Akers? No, sir. Mr. Seeley? No, sir, Mr. Chairman. I have um, just a couple briefly. Um, June 12th, which is Thursday, <coughs> is the anniversary of the 1967 Supreme Court case um, in the Lovings, and it's celebrated as Loving Day. I just wanted to acknowledge that since they were two Caroline County <coughs> residents who actually went before the Supreme Court to have the right to get married. So life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are things we uh, pursue. So. I again congratulate them and uh, wish the family the best of luck and there's a big celebration I believe in New York. And the other thing I asked Mrs. Hatcher uh, for a year end summary I think uh, so we could part of our fiscal responsibility to make sure we understood what was left in each budget at the, in the last month of the year. And I noticed the school board had five million dollars left in June of this year. Uh, and last year they had $9 million left, and, and Ms. Hatcher is going to check and see if there were some payroll discrepancies um, to find out exactly what happened, because um, that would be a lot of money that we could give teacher raises and bus driver raises to if, if we found that it was still there. So that was it. Moving on to our first order of business, we're going to have a recognition of Linda Hoyt and from the Treasurer's Office. Uh, Mrs. Kern, you're going to come forward with her first to the podium, and then we'll ask you to come forward. So if you would come forward, Mrs. Kern. 
And I understand, Linda, you live on Manapana Trail somewhere. So you're in the Bowling Green District? Mm -hmm. All right. That used to be the Manapana District, but I, I, <laughs> I've asked Mr. Seeley, since he represents you, if he will read the resolution from the board commemorating your service. Resolution of appreciation for Linda Hoyt and her service to Caroline County. Whereas Linda Hoyt began work in the treasurer's office in May 1993 as the customer service cashier and whereas in 2003 became one of the first DMV cashiers when the treasurer's office began <coughs> offering DMV select services along with the commission of the revenues office and whereas in August 2007 she was appointed deputy treasurer customer service and enrolled in the certification program at the Weldon Cooper Center for Public Service and whereas Ms. Hoyt retired from full-time employment on April 18, 2014, after 21 years of dedicated service. And whereas during her career in the Treasurer's Office, Ms. Hoyt always performed her job with integrity and professionalism and strived to provide exceptional service to the citizens of Caroline County. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Caroline County Board of Supervisors hereby recommends Linda Hoyt, commends Linda Hoyt for her accomplishments, her commitment to Caroline County, and her dedication of public service. Be it further resolved that the board conveys its best wishes and happy and enjoyable retirement and continued success in all of her future endeavors. Adopted this day, 10 Jan the 10th day of June 2014, uh, Charlie Culley, Clerk of the Board, Floyd Thomas, Chairman. <coughs> Do you want to do one from there and then we're going to ask them to come up or would you just rather have them come up? Okay. Ladies, if you would please come up. Can we have, there's a couple other deputies and Everyone staff that you here. would want yeah. to come up, feel free to come up. Come on. Everybody that was in the office when I paid my taxes the other day, come up. And they didn't have candy. Can you believe that? I think I'm bringing. Line item for candy. Exactly. Yeah. Now, uh, Mark's going to tell us where to go, so we'll start here, Mark. Okay. So we'll do one like this. Congratulations. 
Thanks, What's that? Oh, my goodness. Thanks, Richard. I appreciate you. I'm sure. I come back. I was going to say, she's already, I knew she was going to come back. That's good. Thanks. We are getting a real Agenda item is uh, continued discussion on the possible publication of delinquent, delinquent taxpayers. And I believe we had this discussion in April uh, when I was out, Mrs. Curran. This is really um, your area. So if you would. Okay. I um, had given you all some preliminary revenue numbers as of. Friday. Um, I ran the report again today, and although the current numbers have changed um, significantly with the mail that we've been uh, processing, the delinquent amounts really haven't changed much, so I did not print out a new revenue summary for you all for tonight. Um, looking at the delinquents, I mean, we are working, we're doing the, the DMV stops, <coughs> we've done it was 200, and I also got some cost on doing the, the newspaper ad. Uh, so far this year, we've done 201 DMV stops. We've done 55 of the employee liens and bank liens, what we call third-party <coughs> liens. But we've done uh, more than 2,500 of the debt set-off collections, which primarily focused on the 2013 tax collections. For June 15th, we have another $62,000 coming from the state, um, which will be spread between the tax collection, the 2013 penalty, interest, admin fees, and then those vehicle license fees that are also part of the taxes. And looking at the vehicle license fees, those are at this point over budget by about what the personal property um, was we still have to collect. The personal property is now on but the modified accrual basis. <coughs> so we don't just have the month of June to collect the delinquent taxes that are remaining. We have July and August as well to to meet that 60-day accrual period. So um, I, I feel like we will make the you know, delinquent amount. We will collect that. Um, but we can also look at you know, advertising, um, maybe on the website, may, putting the list available there, because of, even in the, I think the Carolina Progress, it was about $1,800 to run a full-page ad with the list of all the names and amounts that are due. And the uh, freelance, we looked at that, and it was a little over, I believe, $3,200 for like a full page ad. And it may not take that much, but there are, um, there were 8,000 delinquent taxpayers um, when we sent out the second notices. So I, I don't know how it would all fit on the page. I haven't really had time to, to see how much of an ad we'd have to run. Thank you, Ms. Kern, and that's, you know, really, it's the treasurer's, I don't want to say responsibility, but decision as to do that, so I just want to make sure that the board had, had 
offered some help. I know some board board members. So any questions? Mr. Bach? Yeah, I, I actually have several uh, okay. in regards to this. Um, what is the total amount, I guess, delinquent this year right now, I mean, for this year? Do, you, do we have a number? I would not, I haven't looked at the May numbers or the amount that was due. Um, I could get that information for you, though. Could you email that to, to all of us? Sure. And uh, what about, just out of curiosity, what about the, um, what about the past five years? Because once this goes five years, you can't collect anymore, correct? It's, it's, it's uh, once you go past five years, if someone's in the first property, it's uncollectible from what I it, understand. It's pretty, it, we usually, unless mm -hmm. you've got like a bankruptcy or a judgment against them, then it is, you have to, to write that off. So I can. So we can get the, we can get that list as well. Or how much money is owed. Right. Um, I guess the other thing is um, just for, um, I guess, uh, the Board of Supervisors, is it possible for us to get a list of names of people that are owe, owe the county and, and what they owe? Is that, is that possible? I believe you can get real estate because that's public information, but I don't believe we can disclose the personal property amounts due. I'd have to look. It's but if, is, if that, it's is that something that we can, I mean, I, I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, can you, can you okay. find that out as, as well? Well, ask Mr. Emerson to okay. find out, and he'll give it to Mr. Cully, and then if it's okay, Mr. Cully will let okay. you know, and then you can send it to the We board. just don't normally yeah. disclose that personal property right. amounts unless it's to the taxpayer. Understand. Understand. And then I, I guess the other thing, too, is um, when you, I, I guess when we're putting down an 11 cent, we just put down an 11 cent tax increase, okay, um, which is significant in the county. And, I'm, and I, all I'm saying is, my, my perspective on this is we want to make sure that we're collecting, we need to make sure that we're collecting every penny possible in the taxes that are owed to us. Because an 11 cent tax increase is uh, extremely significant to any home owner in Caroline yeah, County. I understand. And um, I, I think that's kind of important. Is it possible in the, um, when you send out notices, um, I guess that would be something for the board to discuss, but when we send out notices saying, hey, this is the second time you got a bill or how many times you got a bill, is it possible to say that the board is in discussion of discussion about possibly publishing these on the county website in the Caroline Progress in the Freelance Star? Um, I don't think people want their names in the paper for owing us $3,200 or $1,500 or $500. We are, um, with the second notices that go out, um, or the, the notice demand for payment that goes out every um, about 30 days after each due date for the personal property, we are revising that form to have that wording on there so we could. So you will put a wording that, the, that these, names, these, these names could possibly be published if payment is? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, that's, and yes. And as, as far as the, can, the, the last thing as far as Mr. Emerson, if you could get that for us, as far as the, is, is it, whose discretion is it to publish those names? I mean, is it the treasurer's discretion or is it the board of supervisors' discretion? Because that's a, that's a uh, I guess that would be a legal question. I, I mean, I think if it's disclosable, I, either one of you could, just, could make the decision to disclose it. I mean, it's one of the treasurer's duties to collect the, the amounts, and if her decision is to publish it, she could. But since it's public information, I don't know why the board couldn't do it either. But I can look, I'll, look, I'll look and see if there's any prohibition on that. Okay. Mr. Chairman, is it, I mean, since Ms. Curran is going to get us the, the list of names, uh, email us the list of names, who owes us and so forth. And Mr. Emerson, can we have this put back on the board agenda for the next meeting? We can do that. <coughs> Thank you. Question, Mr. Underwood? Yes, sir. S since she's going to be looking up that information, um, I guess there's roughly 9,000 delinquent tax accounts from last year, according to her email. Mm -hmm. Just wanting to, if we could get a breakdown of how many of those are actually what I call long-term issue that's been a two-year, three-year, uh, those who are habitual versus those folks who are new in terms of delinquency? I don't believe we're going to be able to tell with that number how many are 
new, because I mean, there, there are many when you're working in the collections that you I'm see sure. the same names come, you know, That's every year right. they come through and we take their state refunds or you can look at the um, account and they might have multiple DMV stops. They got one in 2010, they got one in 11, they got one in 13. So, I mean, we're, you know, it's not unusual if, for them to, to come up every year and to have some type of collection action taken against them. If, if you so. were to do a, a search by a date, let's say, every taxpayer that's been delinquent for, since uh, 2011, and then a search for everyone that's been delinquent since 2012 in your database, wouldn't that give you a number of folks in terms of three years? We can see year? who who owes that. You know, and I'm just looking for a number. Three years. Yes, I'm just looking for a number. I'll see if I can. Thank you. Any other questions, Ms. Dow? I guess this is more of a comment. Um, I, I would think that if we're going to do this, maybe we ought to look at some type of policy that determines at what point we're going to publish this information. To my knowledge, we don't have a policy right now that, I'm not saying we can't do it, but I don't think we have a policy that determines when we do it or how much delinquent uh, we, before we do it. And uh, just so that we could be consistent, I wouldn't like to see us just jump out and do something um, kind of on a whim, and then next year and the year after and the year afterwards, if you have a policy that let you know when this is going to happen and, and the, the degree to the delinquency and so forth. Uh, it would just give us a, a, a guide to determine when this uh, action is going to occur. And I'm, I'm sure there will be quite, quite, a, quite a bit more discussion because we'll at least come back at our next board meeting in July. Um, Ms. Aker, do you have any questions? No, because we're going to discuss it again. I had some questions about this report that uh, was given us to about Ms. Kern, but I don't have any questions about that. Okay. Ms. Seeley, do you have any uh, questions? Uh, I, Ms. Ms. Curran, I just want to understand something that's in your memo, um, and it says there, there's, as Mr. Underwood said, there's 9,954 claims submitted, and you got 13, 1,385 claims that netted $296,000? That was in the, the email March, right, that's, correct? That's okay. the one that yes. I, uh, Ms. Ace is referring to. So. 9,900, almost 10,000, we got 1,300 claims back for 296. So there's probably still some more out there for the other There's ones. still some more, but the um, most of the folks that are getting refunds are going to file in January and February. So the right. bulk of the money has come in, right. the ones that were getting the big refunds. Um, we still have, like every day we get three or four more trickling in as far as getting matches with the state. But it's not, you know, there were days in the beginning that we were getting almost 100 or 150 claims, you know, matches day, with right. the state. So, I mean, we are still getting some, but it, you do have to get a state income tax refund. So the right. folks that are self-employed, that are paying estimated, that don't normally get a refund, I mean, we're not going to get state income tax Can't refund money from those, you know, or from businesses. Okay. It's strictly individuals. Charlie, that 296 is under budget. We're not sure. Just I, I'd ask Mr. Culley to check and see what that 296 was our budgeted number, or if it was more, because it gets back to our original thing. So. Right. All right, Ms. Kern, thank you very okay. much for your help. We appreciate it. Okay, I'll get the information. Okay, the next one is our discussion on the impact of the General Assembly failing to adopt a budget, and I think uh, probably what's happened in the last couple of days, that's not going to be an issue anymore, since there was a senator who resigned and now it's 2019 so it appears that something will pass but you wanted to add something so we're gonna we're pretty much going to believe the general assembly uh, in their infinite wisdom will take care of the budget i also believe in santa claus and the easter bunny but that's another story all right um that takes care of that we're going to let that go um my, my appointment is still going to ride consent agenda um, anyone like to pull anything from the consent agenda items A through I? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Seeley. I would like to pull items B, C, D, and G. Okay. Um, 
Any questions on A, E, F, H, and I? A is warrants. E is a change to the procurement policy, which I believe we're going to give the county administrator the approval to go up to $30,000 on lease payments. Um, selection of Forrester is F. Resolution abandoning school bus routes is H. And I is approval of change order number one for the public safety radio project. Any questions on those? How does the board wish to uh, dispose of the non-pulled items? A motion would be in order. So moved. Thank Second. you. Motion made by Mr. Black, seconded by Mr. Taylor to approve <coughs> agenda items A, E, F, H, and I from the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. That motion carries unanimously. Agenda item number B, Mr. Seeley. Mr. Chairman, in and I know there's been a change in the General Assembly and, and the potential passage of a budget. And I do agree that, that B and C are items that we probably need to purchase, and end of the year funds is great. But until we have a state budget, I thought it might be in our best interest to hold spending that money until the state budget was at least passed and we knew where we were in terms of revenue from the state. Okay, Mr. Cully will ask you, as opposed to Mr. Schiebel, do you believe that delay is going to affect you in any way since we're purchasing from Fairfax County? <coughs> and it's potentially only two weeks because we, we meet again we're on the 20, again, yeah. 24th, 23rd. We have a work session on the 24th. We can follow up. With the <coughs> I, don't, I don't believe that. Uh, the, the one for taking over the recycling for the schools we do believe is a cost-saving measure um, because of the expense of that private contract that we will we will clearly save money by, by handling recycling at the school. But a two-week delay or even a month delay, I don't think, uh, unless I get something from, uh, Mr. Shebel? from Mr. Shebel that we can't purchase off of that Fairfax Is a, you, you can just nod from there. Is a two-week delay or a month delay going to affect you adversely? OK. Mr. Shebel says no. He just needs a budget yeah, we just transfer. Roll, we just roll the money over next, to next We're going to basically do that anyhow. All right, so we're, gonna, we're OK with B and School closes soon, so there won't be a whole lot of recycling next two weeks, anyhow. We hope, but okay. Uh, agenda item C. So we're going to carry that one over. Agenda item C, Mr. Seeley. Uh, it is the same thing. It's again purchasing. They're tied together. Mm -hmm. I think they were addressed. So okay. So we're at D. Mr. Chairman, D. In in light again of no no state budget, and we don't know what school funds are. Is it? Since we do have a work session on the 24th, I thought we could wait to approve the budget until that, until that night to see where we are state budget-wise. Okay. G? I had a number of questions on G. I mean, we had a presentation. 6C seemed to be the most advantageous to us. Um, the presentation asked to vote for 4C. It, it was never clear to me why. First of all, since we have no dog in the fight, why they were asking us for a vote, and then since they were, why we were picking 4C instead of 6C, and nowhere in that was there any time frame of when all this would take place, which has a lot of people, I think, misunderstand what this really means in terms of a train station at Carmel Church Station. So I guess Mr. Wilson will. Mr. Wilson, if you would enlighten us, please. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, uh, good questions. Um, 4C is what the county has been as a policy regarding Carmel Church Station. We've been working for for some time. That's the city-to-city -city train alternative. Um, 6C, as Mr. Seeley points out, also a good alternative, but it is, assumes a bus route that's going to take people to Fredericksburg and so forth for a while before the other happens, before the city-to-city -city happens. Um, there's not a time frame, sir, because uh, essentially, this is, study is not trying to determine that. It's trying to determine the basic formats that these processes can happen. So it, it's not locking us into any kind of program ourselves. Uh, the reason they ask us for that participation is because the, the county is one of the sponsors of the project. It's, it concerns us. So they would like to see for the document a position that the county feels comfortable with to say 
this is what we should do with this, uh, what we're looking for in the future. And we can take that document to officials in Washington or Richmond and say, we would like to see things that help this alternative come about. Um, again, it doesn't also uh, con commit us to any kind of cost or actions whatsoever. It is a document that we're using to spur other interest into the project. And, and that's essentially what it's for. I guess my other concern was, is we heard that the night that PRTC was here, that potentially the tracks were, you know, 60, 70, 80 million dollars to just take us to Fredericksburg. And I would just like to have seen some accounting. And, and again, are we talking 10 or 15 or 20 years down the road with this? Well, I actually, so that, there's some relief on that issue I can provide you right now. Uh, the PRTC presentation was assuming we were going to be using VRE. Uh, that is a standard concept in the VRE program. We're not talking VRE. We're talking Amtrak city to city. There is no track improvement required for that particular service. So in that regard, we're in great shape. Um, we don't, again, have any commitments to funding with this. And I, I, I appreciate your, your, your keeping your eye on the dollar sign here for sure on this project. Uh, this is recommendation is not going to commit us to anything like that, which I, I think is, I hope, somewhat reassuring. The reality, Mr. Wilson, is that uh, if we select 4C as our desired alternative, that's purely rail service. Yes, sir. And, and if you look at it unemotionally and logically, the odds on pure rail service city to city, city to uh, commuter stops, is a little more, it's going to take a little longer to happen than possibly the bus to, you know, Fredericksburg, the bus to Richmond, or something like that. Possibly. So, it doesn't, doesn't uh, keep us from doing those things. Right. Uh, we can still do the bus concept if we wanted to. This document isn't tracking us into any particular activity. What it's doing is it gives us a tool to talk to elected officials and federal officials elsewhere and saying, this is the sort of thing we'd like to have happen. It, it's not, we're not saying, this is our plan, this is all we're going to do. We're not considering anything else. Um, it, it just gives us a tool to work with. So what you're saying is from a, from a marketing standpoint, a sales standpoint, it would be best for the county to say we prefer city to city stop along Amtrak and then we quietly do buses from there to VRE or other things in the same time. Now, should the board feel that's the wise course? Absolutely. Okay. Discussion? Other comments? Mr. Chairman, I'm Davis? just, I'm concerned that if we, if we change our position in the middle of the stream because uh, when this development was uh, first brought to this board and was approved by this board, the majority of this board, it's always been about a rail station at Carmel Church. And it's always been about uh, what was going to be developed around the rail station. And uh, you would have rail access to Washington and, and all of those uh, great things that, that come along with it. I am concerned that if we change our thought process and if we change our position now, uh, we could very well be sending a negative signal to the people that uh, could be trying to and working and which have been working uh, because the grants that we've gotten so far uh, have not come from the county. They've come from you know, the federal and right. state. So, uh, and I'm concerned if we change our thought process now that we could be uh, sending a, a dangerous single, a signal to those people as to uh, we really weren't serious in the beginning. Uh, I understand what Mr. Seeley has said. Uh, but again, I don't, I don't believe that uh, it will do us as much harm as if we change our position. I think that may do us more. So what you're saying is you would like to go along with 4C? 4C I'm saying let's go with 4C. It does not uh, uh, prohibit us from having the bus uh, transportation should it uh, need to take place sooner than the rail gets here. Uh, but I think it does help us move along the rail uh, process uh, without hesitation. Motion, either way. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion that we do approve uh, the uh, county transit quarter 
and facilitate his analysis, uh, alternative analysis, and go with 4C. Is there a second? A second. Okay. And what we're basically saying is we're going to go along with the city to city rail preferred method of transportation. A, a, a preferred. Yeah. Preferred. Preferred. Any uh, more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson, for your help. We will carry over, uh, not that we normally do, but we'll have to carry over V, C, and D to our work session. Um, so our work session will a actually have some required action in it. Um, wow. Mr. Fincham, are you by any chance ready with number eight? Which is the property maintenance update? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I've provided you a brief update on the property maintenance issues that were previously discussed um, with the board concerning structures and properties uh, in the Milford area. Um, Related to the, the property issue um, with inoperable vehicles, we have reached a point where we cannot go forward anymore without any action by the board. And under the property maintenance code, the Board of Supervisors is the body charged with official notice to property owners uh, to come into compliance with the inoperable vehicle section. Uh, what staff would ask related to that specific issue is that the board authorized the county administrator to send notice um, for corrective action to be taken by June 24th, which is your next work session. And we can update the board that night as to uh, whether we are uh, in compliance or not. Okay. Let's do that one first and then we'll do, because you've got more phases to it so yes sir um in this case um for board members who who don't know or haven't personally seen it uh mr fincham and i took a tour of a particular site that a constituent called to complain on and the resident at that site had over 10 vehicles parked uh, within 100 yards 50 yards of the neighbor's well and these vehicles were, um, if I call them vehicles, that's kind of a stretch. Um, some of them were purely junk cars with fluids leaking. Um, this same person had been basically evicted from Spotsylvania for the same opportunity or the same, I guess, uh, issue. So they moved from Spotsylvania to Caroline with their at least 10 cars parked on the street, leaking fluids. It looked like a junkyard to me. Um, and I expressed my concern to Mr. Fincham and tried to get rid of that in the entire county. So at this point, I'm going to ask if the board would, uh, would submit a motion that would allow Mr. Cully to take the next step in property maintenance and send a letter giving this person basically 10, uh, 14 days to remove all of these cars. Because I think it's, a, it's not only ugly, but it's a health hazard. Or, or otherwise bring them into compliance. I didn't say that. I said get rid of them. And you, you're you being nice. That. You implied that. No, I didn't. <coughs> you, you are being nice, and no one has seen these cars. These cars are pieces of junk. So I'm going to quietly imply that. But I'm going to ask the board if we would grant authority to the county administrator via motion to allow him to take the next step in removing this uh, blight from the county. So moved. Thank you, Second. Mr. Taylor. Seconded. Motion made by Mr. Taylor, seconded by Mr. Seeley. Um, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Mr. Cully, you'll get that letter out tomorrow morning. Um, if you'd like to deliver it, I I'll have the sheriff help you because we'd like to make sure it gets there first. Mr. Fincham, you have more. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, the remaining items are or items that we uh, also briefly discussed related to um, structures that might be deemed uh, hazardous under the county's uh, property maintenance code. 
There still uh, are a few outstanding issues related to those structures that require uh, attention by staff uh, prior to the board taking the next step. And as I mentioned in my memo, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is come back to the board on the 24th. Uh, staff will complete its uh, reporting obligations um, after um, early next week. Uh, to some provisions we have to uh, allow to occur. Right. And at that point in time, we can prepare our report uh, with a recommendation to Mr. Cully uh, to provide the board on the 24th. Same thing. Okay, so you again need board action? Not until the 24th. On the 24th, we'll, we'll do the same thing. And, and you are, the next thing you're going to say is the updated property maintenance? I don't want to get yes, the, okay. uh, the derelict structures, um, Ms. Carter has been looking at it from her end related to how that might work. Um, we are continuing to work on that ordinance. The structures in question, I think we've been able to work in under the, the hazardous uh, buildings provisions, uh, but we do continue to work on the derelict structures uh, and we'll have uh, a draft ordinance amendment for your consideration. Okay. For the, well, I guess that'll be the first meeting in July? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and again, so the board members understand, we have, we have a property maintenance code now which basically says you can come up and put plywood on the doors, plywood on the windows, but after two or three years, the plywood looks just as bad as the old thing, so Mr. Fincham is going to try to work some things to rectify that, um, which, which really will make the county look better in a lot of places. I mean, I understand you have issues and problems with the building, but five, ten years is a little bit long time to have an issue. So we're going to try to fix it not only here in Milford, that's just the tipping point, but we're going to do it for the whole county. All right, that's it, Mr. Fincham. Thank you very much. Can we do, um, can can, we do can nine? Can we do 12A uh, since Mr. Fincham is? Um, let's do 12A after public comments, because I expected public comments on 12A. Okay. So let's, let's do that. Mr. Fincham, um, we're, we're, we're good with you, I think, unless you want to add something else. Do you want to dispose of number seven? No. Okay. Well, yes, yes. If you want to, we can dispose of number seven, but number seven is really a case where the applicant was supposed to get information to the, to the county to process the application and we have not received that information. Yes, sir. It was continued from your last meeting with direction from the board related to parking and right. drain field verification. The parking with respect to VDOT access has been re resolved. We do not yet have resolution concerning the parking lot and the drain field encroachment. We are still awaiting that uh, and the appropriate board action would be to defer this item again until your July meeting. Okay. And, and by law, before you go, by, by code, we're required to take action on the rezoning within six months? You no, you actually have a longer period of time. You have okay. 12 months. You're well within your time frame. Okay. Thank you, sir. So we would need a motion to defer? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to defer this until our first meeting in July. Is there a second? second? Mr. Underwood made the second. Motion made, made by Mr. Seeley, seconded by Mr. Underwood. We're going to defer agenda item number seven until our July meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Chief Loftus, are you by any chance ready to do your part? Your agenda item number nine. Good evening. Before you, we have a piece of old business, uh, the funding of volunteer fire stations capital improvement projects. Uh, you asked us to look into that. We spoke with both Bowling Green, who had a significant capital improvement project underway, uh, as well as Ladysmith, who really was the impetus for this, this process. Uh, we looked at several uh, options. We talked to both, both of those individual companies, as well as the rest of the companies at the command staff meeting, and we've proposed, uh, the staff recommends the following option. Uh, 
and that option would be to if the county so 